How do we determine if a subset of a vector space is a subspace? Today, we'll do five examples of answering just such a question using the two-step subspace test. Link in the description to my lesson introducing this subspace test. Today, we're just going to practice applying it. If W is a non-empty set of vectors in a vector space V, then W is a subspace of V if and only if these two conditions are satisfied. What we need in W for it to be a subspace is that vector addition is closed and scalar multiplication is closed. Let's get into it. We'll begin with a sort of trivial example, which is the zero vector. In any vector space V, the subset containing only the zero vector is a subspace. It's certainly closed under addition because the only addition possible is zero plus zero, which is zero. It's also closed under scalar multiplication because any scalar k times the zero vector is the zero vector. So indeed, we do have a subspace here. Some of our examples will be subspaces. Some of them, though, will not be. Let's move on. Example two, we're considering the subset of the vector space R3 containing all vectors that have zeros in their second two components. This, you can probably quickly see, is a vector subspace. It's closed under addition because if we take any two vectors from W, they must be of the form A00 and B00. If we add them, we get another vector in the form of the W vectors, a plus B, zero, zero. Its second two components are zero, and so it is still an element of W. W is closed under vector addition. It's also closed under scalar multiplication, because if we multiply a vector A, zero, zero from W by any scalar K, still the second two components will be zero. The first component will be Ka. This is still a vector in the subset W, so we verified that W is a subspace. And let's just add our conclusions here. For example one, we concluded it was a subspace. Example two was also a subspace. Let's move on to example three. We're considering this subset of the vector space R3 containing all vectors whose second two components are equal to one. Is this a subspace? Well, let's look at vector addition. We can see from a basic example, if we take any vector from the subset A11, and add it to itself, so A11 plus A11, we get A22, which is clearly not an element of W. To be an element of W, its second two components would need to be one. So W is not closed under vector addition. That means it's not a subspace. It's also not closed under scalar multiplication. If we take any vector A11 from W, Say we multiply it by 2, just to give us a counterexample. What we get is 2a, 2, 2. Again, the second two components are not 1, so w is not closed under scalar addition or scalar multiplication. So we'll add our conclusion here. This is not a subspace. Example 4. We are considering the subset of the vector space R3 containing all vectors where the second component is the sum of the first and third. So these vectors have the form A, A plus C, C. Now this subset is closed under vector addition. We can take an arbitrary example. Here's one vector from W, and here's another vector from W. If we add them together, the first component is A1 plus A2. The second component is A1 plus C1 plus A2 plus C2. And the third component is C1 plus C2. Now addition is commutative, so we can rewrite the second component as A1 plus A2, which is the first component, plus C1 plus C2, which is the third component. So clearly this is a vector in W. Its second component is the sum of the first and third. So uh, w is closed under vector addition. It is also closed under scalar multiplication. If we multiply a vector a a plus c c from w by a scalar k, what we get is k a, k a plus c, k c. Now the middle component, if we distribute k through, is just k a plus k c, which is clearly the sum of the first and third components, so indeed it's closed under scalar multiplication, and this is a subspace. 
So example four was a subspace. Let's move on to example five, where we are dealing with matrices. Consider this subset of the vector space of all square n by n matrices. n could be any positive integer. And we're taking the subset containing the diagonal matrices that are n by n. Clearly, for any n, this is going to be a subspace. It's closed under vector addition because the non-diagonal entries of any diagonal matrix A plus another diagonal matrix B will by definition just be 0 plus 0. These are diagonal matrices, so their non-diagonal entries are 0. If we add them together, the non-diagonal entries will still be 0. Similarly, for scalar multiplication, any non-diagonal entry of a diagonal matrix A is 0. So when we hit it with a scalar k, those non-diagonal entries will still just be 0. So it is a subspace. The set of n by n diagonal matrices is a subspace of the vector space of n by n matrices. Let's move on to our final example. We are again considering a subset of the vector space of all n by n matrices, and our subset W consists of all matrices A, where AX equals 0 has only only the trivial solution. So this contains all n by n matrices where the only solution to the equation ax equals zero is the zero vector. We can quickly see that this is not closed under addition. For example, the identity matrix has only the trivial solution in this equation, and so does the negative identity matrix here. So both of these matrices are elements of W. However, if we add them together, we get the zero matrix, but certainly the zero matrix does not have only the trivial solution in this equation. In fact, it has infinitely many solutions. We could make this vector whatever we want, and it would still be a solution to this equation. So W is not closed under vector addition, thus it's not a subspace. It's also not closed under scalar multiplication. For example, if we take any matrix A from W and multiply it by the scalar zero, this equation, 0 times A, X equals 0, has infinitely many solutions because it's going to look just like this equation up here, which also has infinitely many solutions. So the set of every n by n matrix A, where this homogeneous system, AX equals 0, has only the trivial solution, is not a subspace of this vector space. There is one more look at all the exercises we completed. This is a selection of exercises from Howard Anton's Elementary Linear Algebra textbook. Link in the description to that textbook if you're interested in buying it. I hope this helped you understand how to apply the subspace test to determine if a subset of a vector space is a subspace. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.